Today I'm going to show you how I framed and finished this new fireplace in our living room. I haven't quite got to the mantle yet, but I'm going to be working on that next and I'll put it in a separate video so this one doesn't get too long and drawn out. Now this is my first time doing a gas fireplace, so I actually just looked up a local fireplace shop and wandered down there and they kind of walked me through the different options and sizes and brands and all of that. So I decided to go with a heat and glow slimline 3x which is like the smallest unit you can put in existing construction but we have a really small house so i needed to go with a, a small size here so i got the unit all ordered up at the shop and while i'm waiting for it to get in i want to get going on the framing so i looked up the unit online um, on the heat and glow website and you can do this for any brand any unit that you go with but this is the heat and glow one and you can just scroll down and pull up the the framing specs and electrical specs and all of that for it. So I pulled up my specs over here so that I know what all I need to be framing out. Here's our framing specs down here. So I just looked these up, these are my framing dimensions and I'm instead of doing just a flat straight wall, I'm actually gonna do a taper. So I got my, my rough opening and clearance to combustible set here. I'm just reading it out of the, the requirements for this unit and I drew it up in SketchUp so that I kind of have a a clear idea of where I'm going here. So got it all drawn up, um, dimensions figured out, got my rough opening to fit the unit that I'm going to be installing and I'm going to go get started. The very first thing I did was actually use some painter's tape to kind of lay out the mantle size and dimensions just to kind of get a good scale for it in the room, what it's going to feel like and everything. Now depending on your flooring and the fireplace unit that you decide to go with, you may or may not be able to just put it on your existing floors. In this case, in this house, I'm redoing the floors at the same time right now, so I just cut the carpet out of my way and I'm going to get started with the framing. Normally at this point when you're framing and you have two perpendicular walls, you would put a top plate on the top to tie them together, but I'm going to be doing a tapered top to this fireplace. So I'm actually going to use this top plate as the bottom plate for the tapered section. That way I can build the tapered section exactly to the ceiling height and I can slide it into place and then I'll use that plate to tie these two walls together. So because this is a tapered um, fireplace surround, it's kind of a piecemeal installation, a uh, little different framing. I'm just doing it the, the best way that I can get all the pieces up here and get everything tied together without having just like stacks and stacks of plates tying the walls together. So I'll show you what I mean here. All right guys, fireplace unit is in and working great back there. I mentioned it at the beginning, but I did hire out the installation part of this project. Now I had considered doing the whole thing myself, but I really didn't want to mess with running a gas line and then the venting out of the roof and 
all of those things that are like fire and gas and explosives. So um, I hired it out to the same shop that I bought the unit from. If you're in Minnesota, they're out of Buffalo, Minnesota, Fireplace Creations, and they've been wonderful to work with the whole time. So they came out and they had the whole thing installed and up and running in like three hours. So it was crazy. If you go through a Fireplace shop, a lot of them do offer full service installation. So you can go in and select your unit and they'll come out and they'll do your framing installation and your finishing work. So it's really up to you how much you wanna hire out versus uh, do yourself. So now that the unit is in, it is time to get started on the finishing. I'm planning to do a floating mantle around the fireplace here and it's gonna wrap around from the sides all the way around the front and around the other side. So I wanted to get my floating brackets attached before I start putting up the drywall. And the reason is you can attach floating shelf brackets on top of drywall, but sometimes the drywall will start to kind of give underneath it and you'll end up with a little wiggle in the shelf. So I want to make sure I'm directly on the studs here because I really don't want this mantle to be able to move at all. So I just grabbed these uh, floating shelf brackets off Amazon actually, and they were a little bit too long. Um, it was the only length they had that were six inches, but I'm only going to do about a six inch mantle here. So. I just took them out into the shop and I, I cut the ends off a little bit so that they're the, the right length and they won't pop out the front of the shelf basically. So another option is a lot of people will do lag bolts, like if you have a brick fireplace or something like that, you can drive lag bolts in and cut the ends off to the right length. But since I have two wall plates here, I didn't want to drive the lag bolts between them, which would be centered for the mantle. So that's why I decided I wanted to go with these um, floating shelf brackets instead because they'll kind of go across those two plates and attach in the top and the bottom so I'm not driving a lag bolt like directly between them. So I just thought it would be a little bit stronger and they were easy to get off of Amazon, easy to work with. So I'm going to get these attached and then I'll be ready to start putting up the drywall. My goal here is to go for kind of a stucco look finish. I originally wanted to do stone, but this is not our ground level floor, so the stone was just gonna be a little bit too heavy for this spot. So instead, I'm gonna go for this stucco look. I found a product, um, it's a Roman clay, and it's from Portola Paints and Clays. If you can hear all that clanking, it's my daughter in the background. <laughs> My kids are always just hanging out while I'm doing this stuff. So, um, okay, so it's from Portola Paints and Clays, and I've seen a couple of people use it to do a cement finish on fireplaces. So I just grabbed one of the lighter colors, and I'm kind of hoping it's going to work for the stucco finish. Um, I haven't seen anybody do it, so I really have no idea what's about to happen, but I'm hoping that it works out. So it has to be applied over a finished drywall surface. So my next step here is to mud and tape all of these joints. Now, I'm definitely not a professional mudder and taper, but I've done a fair amount of it in this house, so I feel confident doing a project of uh, this size here. 
Now, depending on the fireplace unit that you have, you're gonna have different clearances to non-combustibles. With this particular unit, I could drywall all the way up to within a half inch of the sides of it on both sides and three inches to the top. So definitely look up the specs for your unit if you're installing a fireplace to figure out what where you can put drywall and all of that. So since I have this half inch gap here, um, I still do need to fin uh, figure out a way to finish that, but I think I have a plan and um, we'll see how it works. So here we go. So far so good on this little non-combustible piece here. So this is where that half inch gap was that I showed you uh, before this was totally closed in. So what you usually see if you've seen um, like other gas fireplaces or something is it'll be drywalled up to it and then you'll have like a border of tile that goes around it and that's to meet that non-combustible clearance. So I wanted to do the stucco look on this fireplace and if you look at stucco fireplaces, like actual real ones, a lot of times they have this little like border that goes around them um, right around the opening for the, for the fireplace. So I wanted to kind of mimic that but it did have to be non-combustible. So what I did is this is actually a cement board and I cut it out uh, just like you cut drywall actually cement board cuts um, just by scoring and snapping it so I did the same thing and then I pre-finished this inside edge here so I mudded and taped this whole inside piece so that I don't have to worry about trying to do that up against the unit and then I just screwed it into the studs on the side so now my plan is to go through and I'm gonna mud and tape this this kind of raw border edge here so when it's all said and done it should look like one solid piece and the whole thing will look like a stucco fireplace. Now, I did not manage to get a video of finishing this inside edge here, cause I'll be honest, it was kind of an exercise in frustration um, and I was totally just making it up as I went. But what I ended up doing is I put the fiber mesh tape, fiberglass mesh tape, that's kind of like sticky on the back on it. So I wrapped it all the way around from like here around to the back side of this actually. And then I put like four coats of joint compound over it and I just used my hand to apply it because it was easier to kind of get this like rounded edge like this um, with my hand instead of the taping knife. So didn't get a video, but that's how I did it. I just kind of made it up until it was the shape that I wanted. So I'm already outside my non-combustible zone here on the edges, so I'm actually just gonna use normal paper tape to finish this off. If you want, you can use the fiberglass mesh tape here also. It's the same thing I used on the inside, and that's what they actually use inside cement board, so it's non-combustible. But um, since I'm already outside of that clearance, I like working with paper tape better, so I'm just gonna use that, but it's totally up to you.
All right, I finished up all of the drywall work here on the fireplace. So the mudding, taping, sanding, smoothing, all of that good stuff, it's done and ready to go. So I actually got a coat of primer on it yesterday also. Uh, normally with drywall, I use like a drywall primer, but the finish I'm using just called for a multi-purpose primer. So um, I just used a bullseye one, two, three, put a good coat over the entire thing, and we are ready to try out this new finish. This plaster finish is a two coat process. So the first coat is all dry now and I'm just gonna scuff it up a little bit with sandpaper, make sure it's super smooth and knock down any high spots and then it'll be ready for the second and final coat. Now, if you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial on applying this plaster, I'll direct you over to the Portola Paints and Clays uh, YouTube page. They did a really nice in-depth tutorial and that's actually what I watched before doing this. Alright, the very last thing I'm going to do to finish off this is run a bead of caulk along this inside edge right up against the fireplace here. So I grabbed some high temperature caulk and I'm just going to run a bead along this whole inside edge so that this piece is nice and finished right up against the fireplace. <laughs> 